Who's afraid of the big bad pig? Are wild boar Scottish agriculture's next big problem? Wild boar have returned to Scotland after an absence of 700 years and there are three known populations living in Scotland recorded in 2010. These are indicated by the red dots shown on the map. The yellow dots indicate anecdotal reports and so there may be more populations and more wild boar living in Scotland than we think. Their numbers will likely increase rapidly due to rapid reproduction and a lack of natural predators. But uncertainty characterises their presence and we're not sure what impacts they will have to Scotland's landscape and Scotland's agricultural industry. Wild boar are widespread throughout Europe and throughout their range they cause damage to agricultural crops through eating and resting. It's estimated that up to 90% of damage could be caused by them resting, which is seen here in this photo where the pigs have been lined up. Currently in the EU, farmers are paid 9 million euros annually to compensate them for wild boar damage, and so it's a substantial problem. After grassland, maize is the most commonly damaged crop. But maize is also the most valuable crop. And several studies in Europe use compensation data to determine the severity and the economic impact of wild boar damage. And so using this, it can inflate results. Most of the agricultural damage that has been recorded so far in England has been rooting, which is shown here in this photo to permanent grassland. So this is where the wild boar uses their snout to dig down into the soil 60 centimetres deep looking for earthworms. As 58% of all utilised agricultural land in Scotland is permanent grassland, rooting by wild boar could cause a substantial impact. Another potential impact to the agricultural industry is the transmission of disease. Wild boar can tra transmit diseases to livestock but also humans. The diseases of most risk are classic swine fever, foot and mouth disease and trinella. So how do wild boar transmit disease? Well, this is through more pigs being housed outside due to welfare requirements and consumer demand. And so there's an increased risk of a pig and wild boar coming into direct contact and transmitting diseases. But it can also be through intensively reared um, domestic pigs and reared wild boar as well. In short, an increased population of wild boar leads to an increased risk of disease. And as um, wild boar in Scotland are likely to increase, this could cause an issue. Density also increases a disease's ability to persist in a population instead of dying out. So for classic swine fever, a density of three boar per kilometre is required. But for foot and mouth disease, a much higher density of 14 is required. Overall, death rate the likelihood of disease transmission from wild boar as low, but this was made with significant gaps in the knowledge acknowledged. So if a disease outbreak were to happen in Scotland, it would result in trade and movement restrictions, and this would have a financial impact. This was seen in the Netherlands with an outbreak of classic swine fever in 1997. This resulted in 11 million pigs being destroyed with a direct cost of 2.3 billion US dollars. In summary, wild boar have arrived back in Scotland and their numbers will likely increase. The impacts they will have to the Scottish agricultural industry remain largely unknown and more research is required to define these impacts and also look at management techniques that can be used. Please visit our website for more information and don't forget to share using the hashtag The Boring Truth.